Good morning, traders. Welcome to today's market review. This is Fred Rezak at CM Trading. Today is July 30th, 2018, and today is Monday morning. So looking at the economic events today, no major news scheduled for today, but as the week cooks up, we'll see some major news coming out, including the NFP coming up this Friday for July employment. Okay, so that's a major number coming up later this week, as, and we have some other numbers coming up as well. But before we do that, let's take a look at the markets and see what's been happening and what we can anticipate from today. This conference will now be recorded. So ostensibly, we are in the heart of the summer. And with that said, you know, being in the heart of the summer, there's lighter volume, traders are on vacation, people are on vacation around the world, and as such, you know, things are lighter on the market side okay uh, we're looking here at the euro usd i mean this has really been a real big layup okay a really easy trade for the past three weeks i would say you know where we capitulated at 1780 here we sold off to 1620 uh, as a minor support level from a previous support level and then you know we rallied to 1740 ish level back to the 17 1620 ish level excuse me and broke it even further down and then you know we were up back to the 1743-ish level. So this has been like a seesaw ride, okay? Uh, nothing short of it. But, you know, look at how many opportunities you've had to actually jump into this, you know, to make a few bucks, you know, within the interim. So, you know, with this said, I think we're going to continue trading within this range. Now, right now we're trading at 1653. We're not at the bottom of the range where I'd like to jump into it. Okay, so you may want to want to wait until that actually capitulates. However, you know, if it does break 1620 and you do get into it, just be aware that it may break it out even further down. I'm a little bit biased on the downside because of this previous break, excuse me. So keep that in mind as this continues to trade. I don't think that we'll see so much volume today, but just be aware of it if we do. Now, looking at GBP USD, I mean, it's pretty much flatlined, okay? We're trading at 131 ish level, okay? Um, with the uh, onslaught of what's going on in uh, the Brexit or the, the 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 lack of the Brexit. Okay, we've been trading between these two ranges as well, and it's been you know kind of lackluster. Okay, and it's been really the one that's been lagging behind and really the weakest link against the dollar. Okay, and you can see that here as it's you know just floating here at 31, 131 ish level. So with that said, I don't see an impetus to really jump into this at this level. But if it does break out lower later in the week because of the NFP dollar getting stronger, what have you, you know, it might be something interesting to jump into. But right now, it just seems like it's floating on the side. So I just I wouldn't jump into it. But you know, just be aware that it is. Not necessarily in play, but you know, wait until it does get into play. Okay, Aussie USD here trading at 73.89 ish level, getting a little bit stronger versus the dollar, and this is kind of like the same thing. Okay, uh, to the euro, it's been trading between two extremities, so uh, 74.44 ish level, let's say on the upside, and 73.59 ish level on the downside. Okay, but altogether, you know, again, nothing to really write home about. If we do break on the bottom side and get stronger versus the dollar is something that might get interesting now looking at the USD are getting slightly stronger against the dollar we're trading here at 1319 we capitulated to 1309 last week but you know altogether it does look like we're getting stronger here so just keep that in mind and you know anytime you see some sort of breakout on the downside you might want to want to jump into it Lastly, looking at one commodity because gold has also not really been in play. 1219 here on the bottom level, uh, nothing breaking below 1213, which was my target price. Uh, but, you know, keep an eye on it. All right. As the market continues to trade throughout the summer, I think we'll have some more activity there. Looking at oil, we sold off mildly i would say okay let's look at a one, uh, one hour chart there you go uh 6970 to 60 850 ish level and we're trading here at 6888 so really you know nothing jumping at me saying okay this is a clear buy this is a clear sell because we're right in the middle or smack in the middle of you know several ranges okay but as this you know continues to maybe sell off then it might become a little bit interesting you know but altogether 6970 ish level and 6850 ish level is a tight range to be in you know as we've been trading this you know moving forward now jumping into facebook all right now we did cover this last week um and this was a gap down uh facebook company got smacked with regulatory um issues and you know they're going to regulate the company now and it's a little bit questionable as to how that's going to affect the profit margin for facebook with that said you know the stock gap down from 
$217 down to $174. It looks like this this is so classical pump and dump stocks of the 1980s, okay? Um, and what they did was in the 1980s, they used to pump up stocks, you know, to make them look really strong, and then they used to dump them. Um, and sometimes they did it in order to get a better price in it. Sometimes they did it in order to, you know, sell it into the highs and, you know, make it look like it's, you know, you know, taking off and, you know, really, you know, something was looming in the background and sure enough, this is what happened, all right? Now, this is so indicative of this type of market. Um, and, you know, in this type of situation, well, the question is, what do you do? 174, 79 is a big gap down from 217. But ultimately, if we do look at a weekly chart, we'll see that, you know, looking at, you know, from 2014, only four years ago, this has not really come up, you know, it's only receded you know, about 20%, 30% of what it's really been rallying since, you know, of the 44 and the $36 range that it was in. So, you know, ultimately said, you know, this might be a decent place actually to pick this up. As you could see, previously, this was a support level and a previous resistance level right there at 174. So, you know, with that said, I'd take a look at this and keep this on my radar to see how it's going to bounce off, you know, moving forward. Now, the other big techs followed suit, right? Google sold off sharply right there. You could see a 1237 from 1269, and Amazon sold off sharply also from 1872 down to 1816. So this translated in the NASDAQ selling off quite sharply, okay, as you could see here, a nice one-hour chart, big nosedive right there, okay? If we look at a four-hour chart, you can see a little bit better. Um, so, you know, the question is, is, you know, is this just, you know, traders taking money off of the table as we hit all-time highs, okay? Or is this just, you know, a natural correction in the market and we're gonna see a correctional move continue like we did with the Dow Jones and now we look like we're shifting our focus from the NASDAQ being the bullish index to the Dow being the bullish index okay so with that said you got to follow this through and to see if it does bounce here okay if it doesn't then we could see it maybe continue to correct itself down to the low 700 level 7000 level moving forward this week so keep that in mind now looking at the Dow Jones we had a nice rally last week and we're closing above the 25000 level we're just re retracing a little bit, bit to 25374 this might be a decent support level right here as it was a previous resistance level so keep that in mind as we continue training this into this week this is Fred Rezac I want to wish you guys a great trading day thank you